Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Today we are going to learn about the neuron in neuronia. Neuron is the basic functional unit of nervous system, while the neuroglia are the supporting cells which are present throughout the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Uh, there are various types of neurons and neuroglia throughout the uh, central and peripheral nervous system. Uh, in the diagram, we can see that there are four basic types of uh, neurons uh, which are present in the central and peripheral nervous system. Uh, these neurons are uh, unipolar neuron, bipolar neuron, multipolar neuron, and pseudo unipolar neuron. I'm going to write it over here. Unipolar neuron, bipolar neuron, multipolar neuron, and pseudo unipolar neuron these are the four types of uh, neurons which are present in the nervous system unipolar neuron what are the what is the unipolar neuron unipolar neuron as in the diagram we can see this is the unipolar neuron in which the cell body is connected with only one filament with only one pole this is the cell body and this cell body is attached with only one filament uh, that may be uh, the filament of dendrite or filament of exon, but the cell body is attached with only one filament. This is called unipolar neuron. Uh, this one is bipolar neuron, uh, in which the cell body is attached with two filament or with two projection with two poles. So this is a bipolar neuron. This is multipolar neuron, as the uh, cell body is attached. Uh, are connected with the multiple with the numerous uh, projection or numerous filaments uh, you can see that uh, these are the dendrites large number of dendrites and this is the exon so the cell body is attached with numerous with large number of with more than two filament that is called multipolar neuron uh, and this this one this is pseudo unipolar neuron and this pseudo unipolar neuron uh, also exists inside the peripheral nervous system this uh, uh, pseudo unipolar neuron uh, this is actually connected with one pole which is later on connected with uh, which give rise to two branches uh, uh, either to dendrite and exon so the neuron in which the cell body is attached with one pole and that one pole give rise to multiple uh, branches that that is pseudo unipolar neuron uh, then the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system all of these are can exist but the unipolar neuron this type of neuron uh, only exists in the mostly exist in the embryonic stages uh, now coming toward this diagram in this diagram we can see that this is a typical neuron which is multi multipolar neuron is having uh, some basic parts uh, which we should learn in this lecture uh, the basic one of the basic part is the soma or cell body this is the cell body uh, which contain the neuroplasm and uh, uh, other cell organelles inside the uh, inside this and also a nucleus uh, so this is this is what this is cell body I'm going to start it from new numbering the typical neuron will consist of cell body or soma dendrite exon this is this is the cell body this is the cell body uh, th these are the dendrites these are the dendrites and uh, this is the this is the exon so the dendrite the difference between the dendrite and exon is that uh, the dendrite always 
bring information from the body uh, to the to the cell body it bring information to the cell body that in right bring information or bring electrical signal to the cell body and the exon take away the signal from the cell body the exon take away the signal from the cell body while the dendrite uh, bring the information to the cell body it bring to the cell body and the exon take away from the cell body now the second difference between the exon and dendrite is that the exon are tapered uh, the dendrites are always tapered uh, you can see over here that uh, the diameter of the uh, of the filament of the egg of the dendrites become narrow as it goes further it become narrow um, so this is tapered while the diameter of the uh, of the exon remain the same throughout its length it remain the same there is no change in the diameter of exon throughout the uh, throughout its length uh, so the exon is always uh, cylindrical and having the same diameter uh, throughout its length while the um, while the dendrites are always tapered are always going narrow and narrow okay the third difference between the dendrites and exon is that the exon uh, do not have any uh, small bodies over here you, you can't see over here but you can see over, over here the small bodies these are the small bodies inside the inside the dendrites these bodies are called nissle bodies nissle bodies so the nissle bodies are present inside the uh, inside the cell body and the dendrites uh, the nissle bodies are present inside the the dendrites and cell body nissle bodies nissle bodies are always present while the exon do not have any nissle body no nissle body nissle was uh, the name of the scientist who discovered this the body and this nissle body represent the ribosomes which are scattered throughout the cell body and dendrites so if you um, if the dendrite and uh, and the exon is having the same length so then you can differentiate between the exon and dendrite by the presence of uh, by the presence of what by the presence of nissle bodies uh, so uh, the next one is uh, this this is the Schwann cell. This is the Schwann cell, and it has uh, produced a myelin sheet around the exon. This is another Schwann cell, and this has produced a myelin sheet around the exon. Mm. So the myelin sheet is produced um, by the Schwann cell in the peripheral nervous system, and this uh, myelin sheet. Uh, uh, the area of the exon where the myelin sheet is available is present that area is called internode this area is called this area of the exon which is enwrapped by the myelin sheet is called internode internode is also one of the covered by myelin sheet and myelin sheet is produced by the Schwann cell uh, by the Schwann cell inside the uh, peripheral nervous system and by the oligodendrocyte in the central nervous system I'm going to uh, explain that in the uh, next slide the, while the internode this is the internode while the area where there is no myelin sheet or Schwann cell that area is uncovered and that uncovered area is called node so node is the uncovered uncovered area of the exon node is the uncovered area of the exon you can also say that between two internode there is a node 
are between two nodes between two nodes there is an inter node uh, so this uh, this node this node is called node up ranveer node is called node up ranveer ranveer was a scientist who belonged to france a french scientist who discovered this uh, uh, area this node for the first time that's why it is uh, named after uh, his name okay now coming toward the next uh, slide so in this uh, uh, we can see that this is a sensory neuron which uh, bring information from the periphery to the uh, spinal cord uh, this is a sensory neuron uh, and this is the cell body this is the dendrite because the dendrite always bring information to the cell body and uh, this is the exon because the exon bring in the information uh, take away information from the cell body to the uh, to this area so mm, this uh, neuron uh, is having uh, supporting cell these are the Schwann cell which have pr produced the myelin sheet all around the so in the peripheral nervous system the neuroglia neuroglia are actually I'm going to discuss in detail the about the neuroglia 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 are also called glial cells and these are the supporting cells which are present throughout the center and peripheral nervous system and these are non-conductive uh, so there are four basic types of uh, uh, neuroglia in the center nervous system and two basic types of neuroglia in the peripheral nervous system so in the peripheral nervous system uh, there are two types of what there are uh, two types of uh, neuroglia uh, number one the Schwann cells the Schwann cell produce myelin sheet all around the uh, the exon uh, at the node at the internode section of the exon the Schwann cell produce the and these are the Schwann cell but uh, you you should uh, learn that you should keep in mind that uh, all the um, that the myelin sheet is not produced by only one Schwann cell multiple number of Schwann cells combined together together to make the myelin sheet over here uh, for example this portion is made by one Schwann cell and this portion is made by second Schwann cell and this myelin sheet is provided by the third Schwann cell the large number of Schwann cell gave myelin sheet to a single neuron outside the central nervous system uh, the second one is satellite cell the satellite cells are the um, are also the supporting cell which give insulation and support to the cell body these red color cells are the Schwann cell which uh, are, are all around the cell body outside the central nervous system and this provides support to the cell body it provides nutrition and it provides insulation and it provides support to the uh, cell body and it uh, protects cell body from uh, various types of anomalies okay uh, now coming towards the central nervous system in the central nervous system these are various types of supporting cell inside the central nervous system in the central nervous system there are four basic types of uh, four types of what? Four types of neuroglia. Uh, number one, oligodendrocyte, which is very important. Uh, number two, astrocyte. Uh, number three, microglia. And number four, ependymal. Cells. So th these are the four types of cells or supporting cells which are present inside the central nervous system, mean inside the brain and spinal cord. Uh, coming toward the oligodendrocyte, oligodendrocyte is the a cell just like the Schwann cell because this provides myelin sheet to neuron, to myelin sheet to exon area of the neuron. You can see over here that uh, this the blue color represent the neuron. This is one neuron. This is another neuron. Uh, you should also learn that some neurons are also having 
na projection uh, just uh, uh, from exon or exon like structure which is somewhat 90 angle to the uh, original exon and that is called exon collateral this is called exon collateral it is called uh, i'm going to write it here exon collateral exon collateral is also to provide information to the uh, nearby uh, neurons but exon collateral is not present in each and every neuron uh, so some of the neurons also contain the exon collateral but you should learn that uh, you should keep in mind that the this this diagram represents the brain and in the brain uh, the outer portion of the brain consists of gray matter while the inner portion of the brain consists of white matter so the white matter in the white matter and gray matter the white matter contain large number of schwann of oligodendrocyte and these oligodendrocyte give myelin sheet to multiple neuron this should there there is a big difference between schwann cell and oligodendrocyte because one one oligodendrocyte give myelin sheet to thousands of exons one oligodendrocyte give myelin sheet to thousand of neuron you can see over here that this is uh, this is what this is oligodendrocyte and this oligodendrocyte this oligodendrocyte have, has given myelin sheet to large number to this exon and this part of the exon this part of the exon this has also gave large number of uh, myelin sheet to all around the exons to so one oligodendrocyte give large number of myelin sheet to thousands of neurons and unlike the schwann cell the schwann cell only gave uh, the myelin sheet to a specific area of a single exon so this uh, this was the oligodendrocyte which gave insulation which gave the internodes to the uh, uh, in the form of myelin sheet to the uh, to the exon which are in the gray matter which are in the white matter of the central nervous system the second one is astrocyte this is astrocyte and this is also astrocyte astrocyte are two types one is which is present inside the white matter and the other which is present inside the gray matter the astrocyte which is present inside the white matter is fibrous astrocyte this is fibrous astrocyte and this astrocyte is present inside the gray matter this is called protoplasmic astrocyte astrocyte are two types fibrous astrocyte and protoplasmic astrocyte so this astrocyte what is astrocyte meant for what is the basic function of astrocyte there are multiple functions of uh, astrocyte the 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 very prominent function of the astrocyte is it uh, it maintain the position of each and every cell inside the central nervous system it is attached to almost uh, all the surrounding cells um, this astrocyte and this astrocyte is attached with almost all the surrounding cell which maintain the position of the cell and which do not uh, let any uh, any cell to change its position so it maintain the position of the cell inside the central nervous system it maintain the normal harmony of the brain so this was one of the function the uh, one another function of the astrocyte is that it it provide uh, uh, it provide intact blood brain barrier some of the branches of the astrocyte for example this is a blood vessel this is a blood vessel and this blood vessel is also uh, one of the branch of this astrocyte is connected with the with this blood vessel with the endothelial cell of this blood vessel so this uh, this astrocyte enwrapped uh, it's uh, uh, enwrapped all around the uh, around the blood vessel and uh, provide uh, a tiny slit to the blood brain barrier so it maintain the blood brain barrier 
so the blood brain the blood brain barrier is maintained by the astrocyte by the branches of astrocyte if there is no if, if there was no astrocyte inside the brain then the then it will be become very difficult to uh, to maintain the blood brain barrier because there will be large slit inside the endothelial cell and the uh, and various types of uh, chemicals or various types of entities can uh, pass that uh, slit on just like the normal capillaries inside the body so this is different from normal capillaries because this is also having uh, an intact branches of astrocyte so it maintain the blood brain barrier also so the third function of this uh, astrocyte is um, it provide support to the oligodendrocyte also it provides support to the oligodendrocyte you can see over here that it provides support to oligodendrocyte uh, in the in the term of nutrition in the term of uh, various other uh, protections in uh, this astrocyte uh, one of the very important function of the astrocyte which which has been revealed nowadays that uh, the astrocyte uh, can work as a stem cell for the neuron uh, if the the if there is astrocyte inside the brain the astrocyte can develop into a neuron the astrocyte can develop into a neuron inside the brain so this is one of the very good function of the astrocyte that the astrocyte can can be differentiated differentiated into neuron inside the central nervous system so this is this is also one of the important function of the astrocyte now now uh, coming toward the next function the next uh, cell the microglia these are the microglia small cells this this is also the microglia small cell inside the central nervous system which are not on its own position it, it changes its position throughout the uh, its life inside the central nervous system it uh, goes from one place to another inside the central nervous system uh, because this work is the macrophage of the central nervous system the micro the microglia the microglia work is the macrophage of the central nervous system it move from one place to another in the in the search of pathogen if it uh, see any pathogen inside uh, it when it when it come in contact with the pathogen it engulf the pathogen and it, it, the size of microglia get larger and it engulf the pathogen uh, and uh, pagocytize that pathogen so the main function of the um, of the microglia is pagocytosis of the pathogen uh, just like the just like what just like the macrophage so it work as the macrophage of cns it's protect from pathogens okay now the next one is ependymal cell these are ependymal cells this is one cell this is another cell this is another cell the ependymal cells are only present in the ventricle inside the brain you can uh, you all of you know that the brain consists of some ventricles uh, there are four ventricles inside the brain and also a spinal canal so all the uh, the ventricle all the ventricle inside the brain are lined by the ependymal cells all the brain all the uh, all the ventricle inside the brain are lined with the ependymal cell the ependymal cell give an epithelial covering or give a lining to the uh, to what to the ventricles of the brain so for example this is one of the ventricle and at this position and at this position there are two ventricles and one is over here and one is over here so i have um, i have drawn only one ventricle which is also incomplete but this ventricle this ventricle is lined by what this ventricle is lined by the ependymal cell so this uh, the this append these ependymal cells uh, do not let uh, the uh, the fluid to come in contact with the part of parts of the brain so the um, ependymal cells are meant for the provision of lining or epithelial covering to the ventricles of the brain